This is Tim with Redoubt News, Montana, and I'm here with a good man that's been on the battlefield and one of our Montana representatives. And I have a hard time saying his name, uh, last name, but so I'll just go ahead and let him introduce himself. Uh, he would like to just have a few words to the people of Montana, let them know where we're at and where we're headed for the 2020 election cycle and what's coming up tomorrow, maybe the next day. Okay. Uh, my name is Daniel Zolnikov, Z-O-L-N-I-K-O-V. So we got a little Russian background in it, you know. Served in Montana's legislature for four terms now, and now I'm being termed out. And, uh, well, we're here for the governor's race. That's what we're, you know, at the debate. For. And I think here's the here's the thing is during a primary it can get very aggressive and then people will lose faith during the general. And we need the Republican governor. I think that's the most uh, agreed upon thing right now. So what I hope is that whoever ends up winning this, they stay unscathed and they can actually uh, bring in the independents and, and win this. And that's what we need. We need somebody to oversee and look at all the departments and make sure that our budget is being spent appropriately. And I, I think that's what we're going to get with whoever wins. One of the things that I didn't see too much uh, talked about is the foundational problems that we're facing here in Montana with the Constitution, and specifically the Tenth Amendment, where our sovereignty is being attacked from so many different directions. Do you think that, and again, I'm not wanting you to take that here, but that's a really important thing that a lot of people that are asking me when I come down here to cover this, uh, what's going on with the Constitution, jobs and, and other things are important, but right now, 80% of the people are saying, our Constitution is under attack, what are these guys going to do, or what can we do as citizens to get into that program? I, I think you had, that's a great one. We didn't hear that here tonight. So, basically, the states can stand up to the federal government if they have the willingness to. The problem is, is every state and the poorer ones, like Montana, get more federal funding, we're afraid to say and do anything. And so, what do we fearful of losing transportation funding, education funding, health care funding. And so uh, when there's issues like, like, for example, our government's spying on us. It has been for over a decade, 20 years actually. It still continues to. When are we going to stand up and say that's not okay, it's inappropriate, that we are being surveillance by our own government as free individuals? And then, I mean, it goes further. How about um, uh, luckily we have a president uh, that's pro-Second Amendment, but even with those regards, uh, one election we're well, one election away from, from losing a lot more of those rights. So you need a very bold and strong set of leaders in this state to maintain in the worst case scenario. And Tenth Amendment applies actually across party lines, believe it or not. So I think it's important to remember states, we are 50 states that form a nation. We're not a nation that are subservient to 50, uh, that have 50 states that are subservient to the nation. Amen, and that's exactly Exactly where I was hoping that I would hear that from you, sir. And and thank you so much for all you've done for the state of Montana. I'm sorry to see you turned out, but I know you're not going away. I know you're staying on the battlefield, and that's where we need you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless.